Hey everyone, welcome back to our kitchen. Uh, today I wanted to show you how we go about making our own whole wheat bread here. We grind our flour out of organic whole wheat wheat berries. I'll share with you our source for that later, but I wanted to show you the process for grinding the flour and then making our own bread. I grew up on home baked bread and I didn't realize as I was growing up how um, how special that was um, until I started my own family and decided that I wanted to make that a part of our family life as well. Uh, so I hope you enjoy this recipe. Let me take you through the process. Here we go. This is what we use to grind our whole wheat flour. It's called the Nutra Mill Classic, and it's a it's available online through Pleasant Hill Grain, out of Nebraska. I'll include a link for that in the notes below. So we use whole wheat wheat berries, and I'm going to turn this on, and it's quite loud. I'll adjust the sound, but I want you to be able to hear how loud it is. <laughs> Now this was one cup and I normally will grind up three to four cups for a batch of bread for four loaves. So as you can see, it's just beautiful flour, very nicely ground, perfect for your whole wheat bread. And you'll find a link to this Nutramel down below. After I grind the flour, the next step is to get my yeast ready and so I take some pretty warm water and mix some honey in that and get it dissolving. And then I'll take an actual meat thermometer and just check the temperature. I want it to be somewhere between 100 and 110 degrees and that's ideal to get it working and ready to add to the bread mixture. So that's about the perfect temperature, so now I'll just add my yeast and stir that in. So again, it's a little less than a cup of warm water. Dissolve the honey, add a tablespoon of yeast, and just stir that in. Then we'll just set that aside and let it work. This is my Bosch bread mixer and I have had it for over 30 years and it is as reliable as ever and I really love it. I'll put a link to the current model for the Bosch bread mixer at Pleasant Hill Grains in the description down below. If you don't have a Bosch mixer or a stand mixer, fear not. You can also use a handheld mixer for the first part of the recipe and when you get to the part where you're adding in the final four to five cups of flour, you would have to do some hand kneading. A little more work, but still very doable. And if you don't have a Nutramil flour grinder, you can just buy whole wheat flour. Next, I'm going to add four cups of hot water. So this is just a little over 110 degrees because the bowl is cold. So it's going to take a little bit of heat away just dumping it into the cold bowl with the wire utensils and so forth in there. That's just about perfect. So 
So I'm adding my water and then next I'm going to dissolve a little more honey in there. I have put about a tablespoon in with the yeast and now I'm going to add about another tablespoon to this mixture. Good healthy tablespoon. So the honey is really going to help to feed that yeast and help it to leaven the bread. Now I'm just going to turn it on for a little bit and get some of that honey dissolved. Next up is the flour that we ground. So I add in equal amounts of whole wheat flour to the amount of water that I used at the beginning. So I used four cups of water and we're adding four cups of whole wheat flour. Then I like to give that a whirl and get that incorporated in with the water really well before I add the yeast. I like to check the temperature again right before I add the yeast just to be sure that I have it at the optimal range so I'm not going to kill off the yeast with too much heat. And so I'm checking the temperature again here and leave it in there until you're sure that it's not going up any further so you have an accurate reading and then add your yeast and honey water mixture. So this is adding about another cup of fluid here and so I'm going to need to compensate for that with the amount of flour that I have in there. So I'm going to add about another cup of flour to the mix. And now we're just going to put the lid on and let that mix for about five to seven minutes. Really getting that whole wheat flour softened and working. While this is running, I like to take the dough hook and put it in some hot dish water in order to get that large metal hook warmed up so that when I do put it into my bread mixture, it's actually helping with the rising process instead of making the dough go cold and hindering the process. So after about five to seven minutes, I just remove the beaters. Try to clean off some of that gluten that's been building up and I like to see that because that means the dough is really going to be able to hold that air. It's got good gluten in there. And then I put in the dough hook that's been pre-warmed and cover this back up and now we're going to let it do its initial rise. We're going to let it rise almost to the top, just like this. After it's risen to the top and before you start mixing in flour, you want to add a third of a cup of olive oil, one tablespoon of salt, and one tablespoon of honey. And somehow, I didn't get that part recorded, but don't forget to add those three ingredients at this stage. And now we're going to turn the machine on and mix in the oil, honey, and salt. Next, we'll start adding the rest of our flour. I would start with three cups of flour and then keep adding flour until you see the dough start to pull away from the sides. So I've added about four and a half cups here and you can see how the dough has pulled from the side. And I'll let that mix for 12 to 15 minutes. So after I remove it from the machine, start to cut it into four pieces. and start to roll out my loaves. And I used to butter my hands, grease my hands, before I would roll out my loaves. And I found that it actually works better to wet your hands and to use water on your hands to deal with the sticky dough rather than using butter or oil. So I work up four even sections 
and you can either work directly on your countertop or on a tray like this. So I wet my hands and start to roll the dough and then place the rolled section face down and then just pat your loaf really firmly across the top and then use your hands to pat it up along the sides and just form a nicely shaped loaf to put in your pans. Forgot to mention, I do pre-grease my loaf pans so they're ready to go. Wet your hands again and grab another section and repeat. So I like to work it, roll it into the center like this and then put that part face down, pat firmly on the top, push it up on the sides and lift it into your loaf pan. Okay, let's just speed things up here a little bit so you can watch me do the last two loaves but a little faster. You may find you need to put some more water on your surface every once in a while to keep the loaves from sticking on there. But yes, I find water works so well as compared to trying to work on a buttered or greased surface. And you may need to keep re-wetting your hands. And there we have it. Four beautiful loaves ready to rise. So I cover it with a towel to keep that heat in there to get that warmth necessary for the yeast to work properly and a few hours later look at there now we'll just pop them in the oven at 350 degrees for 25 minutes to 30 minutes depending on how crusty you like your loaf There's nothing like the smell of fresh baked bread coming from the oven. Can't wait to cut me a slice. Beautiful. Thanks for joining me here in the kitchen. If you'd like our recipe for our whole wheat bread, just look for the link below. Thank you so much and remember to like and subscribe and we'll see you again next time.